Hey, Steve Mignani here at Burnison Auto Wrecking doing the Junkyard Crawl in Burnison, Massachusetts. This is a 1964 Dodge Polara four-door golden anniversary. Now, the original paint on this is anniversary gold. We can see it here below the chrome and the respray, all of that done in gold. Now, of course, 1964 was Dodge's 50th or golden anniversary. Dodge founded in 1914, but the irony is that in 1920, John and Horace Dodge both died. One of them of cirrhosis, he liked to party, and the other one of uh, Spanish flu, which was basically the COVID of the early 20th century. But this is a special car because this is the third model year, six, two, three, four, for the B-body platform. Now, all of you who know my channel, Project Rem Charger, which is my 62 P code, or nine code, uh, 62 Dodge Dart police car, is the bones, the first year of the B-body, 62, by 63, 64, well, it became this. Now, the thing is, the 62 year, first year for the B-body was a weird looking car. 230,000 units were sold and it was pretty bad. Chrysler was really sucking wind. By 1964, the styling became more mainstream and 457,000 64 Dodges were sold, which is twice 1962. So they were on the path to recovery. And a lot of that had to do with the more conventional styling. But this is a four door hardtop. You notice there's no door window frames. There's no fixed B pillar. Now again, 64, was the final year for a B-body Dodge Polara four-door hardtop. You roll these windows down, it's wide open. It's almost as good as having a convertible. But for 65, well, Dodge made the four-door hardtop something available on the full-size C-body line. The B-bodies were all rendered in four-door post-condition sedan. So again, 64 is the last year for a B-body with four-door hardtop styling. And again, this is a golden anniversary car in the anniversary gold. We see it here. Now, something also in its final year for 64 was the two-piece rear axle. Now, this is an eight and three-quarter type axle, but that nut right there is an indicator that this has a, uh, a hub that presses onto the axle shaft and is secured with this nut and that cotter pin. A nuisance if you have to do any brake work. So for 65, this whole thing here became flat with the recess was gone. But again, this is um, an example of the uh, the nut and cotter pin style eight and three quarter. And if you have a max wedge or a race hemi car, that's the axle you have to use if you want to be 100% correct. Now at the back of this car, we'll see here, uh, this being a Polara top level model. Again, this is not a Coronet. The Coronet name came along in 65 in the B-body midsize car. These would have been a Dodge 330, a Dodge 440, or a Polara or a Polara 500. There's a Polara, it has three taillights. The lesser models, the 330 and the 440, would have had just two, but again, there's three here. This one here is the reverse light, and this chrome bright work here is part of the Polara trim. Uh, this one also has the bumper guards right here, part of the golden anniversary package, not seen right here on the max wedges and the lesser 330s and 440s. But inside, the same spacious trunk, seen and uh and a lot of room back here i mean this is great for sneaking your friends into the movies now we can see here this car was originally built with the am all transistor radio right here is the plastic face for it uh here it is right here the norad numbers etc and uh of course radio delete is the coolest thing to find if you have uh but again this is a uh, pretty typical stuff am this was also a push button torque flight car here are the buttons right here and this right this is upside down I think. but this is where the park paw would go right here but here's your first reverse neutral etc. And this is the dial-a-win torque flight is what we used to call this uh, back in here. are the buttons right here. Uh, well, this is for the cooler. But yeah, kind of, kind of a cool piece right here. And one thing too, 1964, there's a small fleet of altered wheelbase cars, four of them built uh, for racing in AFX. Not 65, we're talking 64, more of that in a minute. But again, this is the trunk area right here where on those four altered wheelbase cars, this is where the wheel houses are moved forward. And again, we'll get to that. But this one is a stone stock four door hardtop, kind of a family mobile, this one here. Um, let's take a look under the hood and okay. 318 Poly. Um, this engine is an outgrowth of the Hemi, the whale motor, so to speak. The only downside is that these things are fairly restricted in their port sizes. So these were available with dual quads in the, uh, oh, the Plymouth Fury and certain vehicles like that. But again, this is a 318 two barrel, or it was. Now something that was available in 1964 was the Max Wedge. And uh, if it was, now the four doors, this car here, probably not a Max Wedge. But anyway, Max Wedge cars, this brake line goes off to a side like that. That's one way to tell a Max Wedge car. This is certainly not 
not a max wedge car. But again, that's something to look for. And over on the passenger side, that shock tower, I'll come around on the race Hemi cars of which 110 were built, 55 Dodges, 55 Plymouths. This structure right here was reversed, so the shock absorber mount was actually inboard uh, about an inch and a half. That allowed the valve cover to come off the race Hemi. And again, so again, 64 race Hemi first year. Uh, this item right here would be specific. Not that this thing is a race Hemi by any stretch, but what it does have is this grill, which in 64, the race Hemi cars, the sedans, would utilize two grills. On the race Hemis, this was basically filled in with a piece of this, and this grill is in nice shape. So if you're building yourself a 64 race Hemi clone, um, that grill is, uh, is worth its weight in gold. Now getting back to the 64 race Hemi thing, uh, I want to show you something pretty cool. This is an aluminum hood pin. It doesn't look like much. It threads on. Well, this was actually from the Dave Strickler, Bill Jenkins, Dodge Boys, 1964 race Hemi sedan. Uh, noted race Hemi collector Mike Guffey gave this to me. He restored that car and uh, used new old stock replacements. Mike Guffey, he has the connections to find these things new old stock. But here's the thing. On the 64 race Hemis, the super stockers, they had wing nuts on all four corners of the aluminum hood. Well, the first four cars that were turned into FX cars used these NASCAR pins. Now I can prove this. How? Well, let's go to these vintage magazines. This is Speed Mechanics right here, and this issue is uh, 1964, but here is setting up a winning Hemi Superstock, how the Ram Chargers do it. So we go inside this magazine right here, and this is pretty mind-blowing. We go into the back of this thing, and we'll find pictures of the Ram Chargers car. Now again, we talked about that two headlight Ram Charger grill. Take a look on the top left. There it is, the Ram Charger's two-door AFX Hemi sedan. So you have there's only two headlights. Well, again, that's, that's a, a cobbled together grill. And this is one of four 2% cars. They had about five and, and eight inch wheelbase movements, not the 65 stuff. But again, these cars had NASCAR hoods that right here. That is that big hood pin right there. That's the NASCAR piece right there. And that was used on the 64 Dave Strickler, Ram Chargers, Dodges, and the Tommy Grove Melrose Missile, and Al Ekstrand Lawman uh, Plymouth. And again, let's do that one time. Here it is. This is such a cool thing. You can see that that pin is thicker than heck. And here it is right here. This is one of the pins from the Dave Strickler car that I'm holding in my hand. Mike Guffey gave this thing to me, which is like an amazing thing. Like I say, he restored the car to 100 points, and he had new old stock NASCAR aluminum pins that he used on that. But again, the Ram Chargers were such a major part of the 64 Dodge story. Another excellent vehicle with that uh, 64 Race Hemi and those pins. Again, this is the Ram Chargers 64 FX car built for factory experimental, not to be confused with the 55 Dodge A864 is made for NHRA super stock competition. Now those had aluminum doors, aluminum fenders, aluminum hoods, and wing nuts that held the hood down. By contrast, the four 64 altered wheelbase cars had, again, these aluminum pins right here. And here is yet another image right there of it, that corner. That's the thing. Now the one in my hand came from the Dave Strickler Dodge, which was a brother to the Ram Chargers cars, a car. And then again, we remember that those cars were built by the Alexander brothers in Detroit for the Ram Chargers and for Chrysler. And in fact, there were two Plymouths. One of them was Tommy Grove's Melrose Missile. And of course, there was Al Ekstrand's Lawman. All of those things were made for NHRA AFX racing in 64. And they were precursors to the 1965 altered wheelbase cars that we all know and love, which of course were the first funny cars. But 1964 was a big, big, big year. Now getting back to this 64 golden anniversary, uh, we can now see where this grill, again, could be trimmed and reused to make a 64 race Hemi clone or you know maybe an actual restoration of a true 64 Dodge who knows but uh, one thing we see on this one too is this one has the standard 10 inch drum brakes 11 inch drums were optional but we can see this room for my finger between the drum and the wheel right there that tells us this is a 10 inch drum brake car the 11 inch drum has almost no room and again here's the torsion bar front suspension so again while this car 
is probably a little too far gone for restoration. It is a fact that the two-door posts are so rare now that folks are taking these four doors, hardtops and sedans, and turning them into two doors. The wheelbase, 119 inches, is the same on a two-door or four-door. So people are that desperate that they'll actually take a 64 or five two-door or four-door hardtop or sedan and turn it into a two-door. It's actually being done. So that's the story of the 1964 Dodge Polara and uh, my association with Dave Strickler's Dodge Boys car. And keep in mind, Bill Jenkins, known for his Chevys, Grumpy Jenkins, Camaros, you know, the Vega, all that stuff from the 1970s. Well, Jenkins was part of the Dodge Boys team in 1964. He was Dave Strickler's partner in the race team. And it's amazing to think this pin right here, Dave Strickler or Bill Jenkins once looked out over the hood, this thing was holding it down as they made their way down the track. And that car became the Sparkomatic match racer. And then after that, a thing called the Yankee Coachman or the, the Royal Coachman here in Connecticut. And so this hood pin was on it throughout all those iterations. And again, Mike Guffey, well-known restorer, is, uh, re he has rebuilt the car to 101 points. Beautiful. He didn't want these scarred old nasty things on it. So we had either reproductions or new old stock pieces made. So he gave this to me. This is probably the most treasured thing I have in my, in my life. And now you know why. So if you like this video, well, just subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel. And there's plenty more where this came from at Bernison Auto Wrecking.